<laughs> we'll get the meeting undergoing. Roll call, please, Don. <laughs> Mayor Mahoney. Here. Mayor Dardis. Here. Mayor Carlson. Here. Mr. Peterson. I am here. Mis Mr. Hendrickson. Mr. Pepcorn. Here. Mr. Ebbinger. Here. Mr. Strand. Here. Mr. Campbell. Here. Mrs. Sherling. I'm here. Mr. Greenberg. <coughs> Mr. Olson. Mr. Seljewold. Quorum is present. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the May 25th, 2023 meeting? So moved. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Last motion carried. Do I have a motion to approve the order of the agenda? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carried. Aye. Uh, consent agenda. Approve all of the following. Do I have a motion? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion or questions? Joel's here today, so we could get an answer if we wanted. So, Roll call vote, please. Mayor Mahoney. Aye. Mayor Dardis. Aye. Mayor Carlson. Yes. Mr. Peterson. Yes. Mr. Pepcorn. Aye. Mr. Ebbinger. Aye. Mr. Strand. Yes. Mr. Campbell. Yes. Mrs. Sherling. Yes. That is everyone. Thank you. Joel, executive director report, please. All right. Good afternoon, board. Uh, so a number of things happened in this last month that I wanted to highlight for you guys today. Uh, the team uh, had meetings with RRVA and continued to diligently be reviewing plans. Um, I forget the number that uh, that we're up to, but Chris can probably fill us in on that. Uh, also had quite a few meetings with the Corps of Engineers and agency folks on future designs for the aqueducts and, and moving some of those things forward. Um, also, we've been meeting uh, quite intently with uh, utility owners as that's kind of our big push right now is to get the utilities um, removed and replaced in uh, anticipation for continued diversion channel excavation. A uh, number of uh, other government MOUs that we're working on on the Minnesota side. I know Commissioner Campbell's been involved in a lot of those discussions with Holy Cross and, and, uh, and trying to get those MOUs in place. Uh, we also, Chris and I met with uh, FEMA. Uh, they had requested a meeting with us to talk about our best management practices for floodplain management in relation to this project. Uh, it was a great meeting. Uh, I think they got a lot of great nuggets out of what we're doing here locally in, in Fargo-Moorhead uh, and how we're uh, potentially going to be managing our floodplain in the future with the, with the new LOMAR and the new remapping effort that will take place after the project is, uh, is complete. Um, and so I did get a recap of that and uh, they're intending to reach out to other programs around the country as well. Uh, so we'll get that information uh, to see what other people are doing and see if we need to um, consider some of those things. And, and as the board knows, as we get closer to the end of construction, you know, this is going to be a big topic item for us is how fast can we um, go through the remapping effort and how and then how are we going to um, you know, view the flood risk uh, behind levees and behind the dam and, and those sorts of things and what sorts of policy measures would uh, the individual member entities uh, like to take. So a lot of discussion to be had there, but uh, I thought it was unique that FEMA reached out to us uh, looking uh, to see what we're doing and looking for uh, ways that they can change based off of successes that we've had. So, uh, so very encouraging, of course. Uh, we also had some uh, FEMA fo folks here for mitigation course, and uh, they did tour the project, so they were able to see uh, the constructed works and where we're at and, and uh, learn a little bit more about the, the Metro Flood Diversion Project. Uh, and then we also had a meeting with the City of Denver, who was in receipt of IIGA funding for their core project. Uh, they are also using alternative delivery, uh, so it's another project that Congress has allowed alternative delivery with the Corps of Engineers. Um, so uh, if to that point, they had a lot of questions for us on how we did what we did and how we put together our, fi our financial package and how well we partner and work with the Corps of Engineers. So uh, with that, certainly uh, open for any questions. Any question, Commission? Oh, nothing, Kevin? Not today. Thanks, Joel. Okay, thank you. John Shockley, General Counsel update. So John and I did, I suppose we should talk about a little bit about the executive director's position. 
I did meet with Joel Paulson and had a, a evaluations form filled out by many of the board members. Uh, General Council collected a performance evaluation forms completed by individual board members and complied the scores into a single performance review summary form, along with noting the comments from various members of the board. The scores range from exceptional to successfully meets job requirements. The board chair and the general counsel then met with the executive director to provide them with the results of the performance evaluation. A summary of the meeting is as follows. Board members complimented Joel on his work and his leadership skills and performance. In all six areas evaluated, he scored well and is doing a good job. In discussion with his staff, it is clear that Joel has chosen an excellent team and they work well together. There were a list of items that uh, uh, John Shockley and I went over with Joel of some things we'd like to see accomplished this year. Some has to do with FEMA, which we just talked about, compliance points, different elements of the project. And in an attempt to try to, quote, have an evaluation a year from now to see if you meet some of those goals, we felt that was a fair way to, to go through those. Any board members welcome. Shockley has those recommendations if you'd like to see them. And the only other request that we wanted to accommodate, as we all know in our own roles, in uh, hiring people and keeping people, it's a very competitive market out there. And his request is, can we do a market survey just to see where he stands up with other people? So that'll be something that would be done this fall. And Chad, I don't know if we reach out to the HR or county to do that or city. We should have a discussion about that after this as well, if it's fair. So, Joe, I'm pleased that this came out well, and we finally got that the annual re annual evaluation. And the next chair coming in, I will help a little bit in helping you understand how we might move that to early big December to get done. So, very good. Construction update. Who's got that? Oh, Terry. Terry's dog giving a report. What? <laughs> Hello. Is there I'm happy to give diversion and inlet structure. There is a, a delay to the diversion inlet structure completion. Um, we're going through a modification uh, that involved the PT bar fix, which anchors the gates into the st structure. Um, uh, due to a time ex extension uh, that goes along with this modification. A uh, number who is covered, the Wild Rice River structure is covered by 86% complete. Um, the, the drone footage covers the preparations going on to cross the existing Wild Rice River with the dam. Number three, I-29, uh, they're finishing up with the two brow ditch bridges and paving of the mainline rays should be complete this year and traffic uh, off the bypass onto the mainline um, race. Number four, we just see one. We're uh, completing the final O and M manual for that in consultation with the diversion authority. Number five, the Red River structure, uh, great drone footage this, this month. We're at 20% complete. Um, the fourth of of the mass concrete pours for the structural slab was complete. Um, over 2,600 cubic yards of concrete placed that day on June 9th. During 27 wetland mitigation project, uh, I think it was reported last month, we did award the um, service contract to plant that and maintain it for five years. The contractor is named Red Bison Services and that company is out of the state of Louisiana. Number seven, Drayton Dam. Uh, they are completing the demolition of the old dam uh, this week and the next week. So kind of a huge accomplishment by this project and uh, construction of the new dam and turf and all of that is still on track for 30 September. Number eight, reach SC2A, 27% complete, and the contractor is back after after um, demobilizing for winter, and they've started earthwork operations. And then we'll move into ongoing design. Um, none of this has changed from the last month, except for SC4. 
the design of that is is delayed from June into August, and that's primarily due to um, including or just designing um, an up and over ramp and other changes due to that design or hasn't moved out. So I think that's probably all Terry had. I knew we were having some issues, so I was just here to support her. Um, but Chris, if you want to take over and and give some more updates on your end, sure. Okay. Thanks, Joel. As you guys can see on the map in front of you, we're continuing to color the channel, uh, so that's a good sign that things are progressing. Um, just a few updates from from the month. We continue to approve designs, which is which is a great step. We're up to 87 approved. It's a plus 10 from the last month. Uh, we continue to have about 50 active reviews going on at any one time. Um, as you step into more of the construction look ahead, they're actively working in in uh, reaches three or in reach three. They're also anticipating starting in reaches four and five soon. Uh, we're just finishing our, our reviews of those stretches. Uh, one thing you'll see is if you're out in the area, there are some areas they are doing some excavation out ahead of of their main excavation. Most of that is for cultural resource monitoring. There were some areas of higher potential effect that were identified through our preliminary studies, and they have been doing some special excavation in a very controlled manner so that can be monitored and make sure that we don't disrupt or disturb any cultural sites. So that work is ongoing as well. Some of that you would see down close to I-94 if you see them out in that area. That's likely what's going on there. Um, a lot of the focus now is, is heading towards bridges. So there's three structures that they are actively working on. Um, the bypasses for I-29 and 81, um, they're geared up to start on those. They, they have to do just some final clearances for uh, migratory birds. So they're in the process of clearing that right now and then we'll start those. Also starting the County Road 32 settlement work, which, which is a great step in uh, continuing our to get to bridge building. And then the upcoming sites, they're, they're nearing start of work on County Roads 22, County Road 20, and County Road 10. So those will be upcoming in the next month or two as well. Um, one good sign, we have received note that they've started to do some bridge beam fabrication. So that's always a good sign that uh, we're heading towards construction and uh, we'll have those bridge beams ready when we when we get uh, ready to set those. On the drain inlet side, not much new this month. They're, they're continuing to get geared up to start on drain 30 on the north end and uh, also gearing up to start on the outlet. Um, Maple River Aqueduct, they did start and Tom will give an update on that in our drone update. And uh, as far as utilities go, we are making nice progress on utilities. I think we're down, um, we're past the two thirds mark of having act of utility um, designs approved and you'll see utility activity primarily, uh, like I note on the, from County Road 22 all the way down to 52nd Avenue South. So the utility work is uh, very active right now trying to stay out ahead of our construction activities. So with that, I'd stand for any questions that you might have related to uh, construction updates. Any questions? Thank you, Chris. Sounds good. You got a drone footage on here too? Yep, that should be next. Okay. The FM Area Diversion Project continues to make history. It has already marked notable firsts, including the first water management project in North America to use a public-private partnership called a P3 for short. It's also the first ever P3 done in conjunction with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm Tom Fuchs, the Senior Construction Manager for the Metro Flood Diversion Authority, here to share more firsts in this month's construction update. We start our drone view at the Red River structure, the largest of the three gated structures that will help regulate flows around the metro area during times of extreme flooding. Crews with Ames Construction, the Corps of Engineers contractor building the structure, have placed a lot of concrete in recent weeks. The last of the control structure's foundations were placed June 9th, and it's believed to be the largest single concrete pour ever in the Fargo-Moorhead area. 2,632 cubic yards of concrete went into place that day, or the equivalent of emptying 263 concrete mixer trucks. 
With the control structure foundation in place, which includes about 1.2 million pounds of rebar, crews are shifting their focus to the stilling basin foundation, as well as the control structure piers and abutments. Over at the wild rice structure, which is nearing completion, we saw the bridge deck poured atop the west flood wall. The east bridge deck will be next along with continuous railings from end to end. Crews at the structure are also working to construct the remaining portions of the southern embankment at the project site. It will extend across the Wild Rice River and connect to portions already constructed at the nearby I-29 road raise project. Work also resumed on the southern embankment segment known as SE2A. The contractor is now stripping topsoil along the north end of the embankment from 112th Avenue extending to Drain 27, southeast of Horace, North Dakota. Close to 1 million cubic yards of material will be moved to complete this two-mile stretch of the embankment. In the meantime, work continues to move forward on excavating the 30-mile stormwater diversion channel. In Reach 3, which is just west of I-29 and about 4 miles north of Harwood, ASN Constructors is excavating the main channel while constructing the levee and the excavated material berms. As the main channel excavation continues to proceed upstream, final grading and topsoiling continues further downstream. In Reach 1, which extends from near County Road 4 east of Argusville, North Dakota, to the diversion outlet just west of Georgetown, Minnesota, we get a good look at the completed channel and all its features including the low flow channel, main channel, levee, excavated material berms, and tow ditches. Work also began this month on the largest of the two aqueducts that the P3 developer will construct. Structural excavation is now taking place at the Maple River Aqueduct site, where nearly 120,000 cubic yards of material will be excavated to reach the base of the structure, which will be nearly 40 feet below the existing surface level. As that excavation occurs, Excess material is being relocated to the West Fargo Lagoons to support that site for the city and community. The aqueducts will include many one-of-a-kind features that we are looking forward to showing you in the coming months. Be among the first to receive those construction updates and more by signing up to receive the Diversion Current at fmdiversion.gov slash subscribe. The Any questions of Amy on this? Amy, you got a report? I do have a quick comms update for you. Uh, as you probably saw, our last Faces of the Diversion featured our mayors on the board, and uh, we recently recorded a crane operator for the next one. So we will start to look at scale of the project as part of our theme for the next newsletter. And on the side, I have some of the stats from our last newsletter, which actually was our best performing one so far, probably because of all those good looking people in there. Uh, nearly a 60% open rate and 12.6% click through rate. So that is uh, well above industry averages. Uh, since we're about halfway through the year already, we took a look again at our social media stats and things are performing well. On LinkedIn, those sharing our posts has increased about 35%. Comments are up nearly 30%. And on Facebook, our reach has increased 168% over the past few months. We have a few uh, media engagements coming up. There'll be a story about the aqueducts and those unique features coming up in the form sometime in the next couple of weeks. Uh, they don't have a hard date for that just yet. And then Joel will be sitting down with the Talk of the Town show from 10.30 to noon on July 12th. And that's my report. Do you have any questions? In the in-town show, is that where he goes into a cafe somewhere or what are you gonna do with that? Uh, it'll be in studio. Oh, okay. I just didn't know if Kevin should bring donuts and you know visit with him. Or... Thank I'm you. sure donuts are always welcome anywhere. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Property acquisition status report, Jody. Yes, sir. So, Chairman, on this first slide is a usual um, summary of our property acquisitions. On the next slide, you can see for the construction footprint and the UMA. Um, we went up slightly in the construction footprint. That's because an MOU um, has been acquired. And then of course, in the UMA, we continue to negotiate and close on the flowage easements. 
On the next slide, you'll see a slight increase. That Southern Embankment Associated Infrastructure, which is the first pie chart there, you don't see big changes because we're still waiting for the majority of the appraisals to come in for SE4. And then, of course, on the channel, it's sitting at 93.2%. All of those have been negotiated. We're just simply waiting for the closing to occur, and then that will reach 100% uh, as well. On the next slide, again, just a high-level overview of the construction footprint and the UMA footprint and the different types of property owners and parcels that we're working with. And I'll spend a little bit more time going through the key activities on the next slide. Uh, so again, we continue to negotiate settlement agreements for existing eminent domain actions in this past month. Um, we were successful in closing on 23 parcels and 11 landowners. Batch 8 uh, Next Steps Letters and Eminent Domain Filing Authorization uh, was approved by the Cass County Joint Water Resource District this morning for three property owners. We continue to focus on coordinating completion of appraisals for the remaining property needs in the UMA and the Southern Embankment area. We did prepare the first plat for the project land and the diversion channel for lands in Weiser Township. And then we also initiated a home removal and demo work under work package 38A, which includes five properties, four in North Dakota and one in Minnesota. I do want to point out at the Cass County Joint Water Resource District meeting this morning, they did um, approve settlements with three landowners covering an additional nine parcels. And of course, the Moorhead Clay County Joint Powers Authority, uh, we lacked a quorum today, so we have rescheduled for next Tuesday, so I don't have much of an update for them. Any questions that I can answer? Mr. Pipcorn. Mr. Chair, can I ask, can you go back one slide and just, you know, when you show the, especially to the right, the, the, the numbers are a lot lower and that's the, the mitigation land. Is, is, that, is that anticipated the numbers are that way? Uh, are they lower than you wish? And can you talk about, is the reason, is it the, the, the price or what are the reasons that that's qu quite a bit lower? Thank you. Yeah, so Chairman and Commissioner Pepcorn, it's a good question. So see that 39.5%. That is certainly lower than I'd like to see it. I mean, at this point, I'd like to see a few more had been acquired. That's why we're starting to go through these batches of eminent domain. There's probably a couple reasons for that. Uh, like I said, we're still waiting on some appraisals. Some of those are in the construction footprint, which would be on the other side. Um, but there are some that are residential properties, and they're still waiting on those appraisals. Um, and then once we do get their appraisals, we like to give them adequate time to negotiate with the land agent and with the respective boards to come to a settlement. Um, we are starting to file those eminent domain cases. So in our litigation summary, which we present to the Cass County Joint Board, we're starting to see those numbers kind of tick up and the number of cases that are sitting there. Um, again, we actively negotiate once we go through that. The, the system that we use is we get the board to uh, authorize a last written offer and then that letter goes out and then we give them a date certain if we haven't come to an agreement by then we will file the eminent domain action this course has been helpful in some circumstances in helping us negotiate those settlements with them i think people maybe have gotten distracted over the past year because some of them have had a year and a half to negotiate with us now and maybe haven't place much of a focus on it. So this inspires them again to come back in and negotiate with us, knowing that if we don't find a settlement, we'll, we'll need to file for eminent domain. And then there are some that disagree with the price that we have placed on the land. Again, we have an appraisal done on all the properties unless we can settle it before the appraisal is completed. If they don't agree with that and we can't come to a negotiated price, then we'll enter in, into the eminent domain process. So there, there's quite a few sitting there. Did that answer your question? Yep, that's great. Can I just fo just one follow up? So, is it? Would you summarize it? Or the majority? Is it the price that we're offering them? Is that the the sticking point? Do you think? And and are is it is it in the ballpark of what the what the other people have settled with? I guess that's my because uh, from my perspective, eminent domain, we would rather not use that if we don't have to. But uh, I, I guess that's what I'm curious about. Is it just strictly the price, and are we in the ballpark? So Chairman and then Commissioner Pepcorn, members of the board, it's a little bit of everything. We have some that are not willing to negotiate with us at all, and so we have very minimal communications. And when we're put in that position, the negotiations don't go anywhere, so we're not quite sure how far off we are in our negotiations. For some of them, the spread is just too great for us to justify to bring to one of the boards to approve. And so what we do is 
Um, when we're looking at the negotiations, what I tend to do is kind of pull the negotiations from all the surrounding property owners to ensure that we're creating something that's fair and equitable to all the property owners. So if I was working with you and I decided that I could increase the value of your land above and beyond the appraised value, and Mr. Strand was your neighbor, I would then need to make sure that that was in line with what we had offered Mr. Strand in his uh, settlement negotiation. So it takes quite a bit of coordinating to make sure, again, that we're trading everybody fair and equally. Um, some of them have come in. I've seen some as high as 50 times what we've offered them. Um, I've seen some that are just twice as high. Um, again, sometimes I think we have some legal counsel that, for, that are representing the landowners. Some of them are in high communications with us, and I think they have a, a true respect for the effort that we're making and are trying to negotiate with us. We have some uh, legal counsel that's very difficult to get them to call us back. And then those are just kind of stagnant, and that's unfortunate because I know the land agents and our lands team, we really want to get these closed and get it. And our preference is always to not go into eminent domain. On batch seven, which was two months ago, um, we did take it to the Cass County Joint Board. We did get authorization to file on two property owners. And before we got to kind of the deadline, they had negotiated a settlement with us. So again, sometimes we get this authorization to go ahead and move forward with it. And it does kind of inspire those conversations to be picked back up again. But it will, what we do also watch is our budget. Right. I mean, and we were we have a certain budget to kind of work within. So based on the appraisal and kind of based off of where we see the market going, um, that's how we make a determination if we can go above and beyond the appraisal because the market adjusts constantly. And so we're always looking for recent farm sales. Um, we're lo looking at all the appraisals. We're looking at anything that we can. NDSU has some studies that come out and we're always trying to assimilate all that information to make the best offer that we feel is possible that will get approved. I mean, and that's the other catch. I have taken offers to the boards and the boards have every right to not approve the offer that we bring to them. And there's been a couple that we've brought to the respective boards and they've made the determination to not approve that and ask us to go back and continue to negotiate. So, um, and some of that then it's also ultimately, you know, the joint board and the Moorhead uh, board to make that final determination. So. Thank you very much. We find if they negotiate with us, they actually do fairly well to get to resolution, but sometimes when you go to eminent domain, it really slows everything down. It does. So, and public should know that we try to be fair to all the all the people we're dealing with. So I think the, the boards of both sides of the, the river try very hard to think about it fairly. So, yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Mayor Dardis, are you ready? Financial update? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Um, Yesterday, the Finance Committee met. We had the opportunity to meet Susan Thompson, who is the new Acting Finance Director for the City of West Fargo. She presented us that uh, this month there's been $2,940,522 worth of bills that were presented. Uh, our financial uh, net position is $185,014,599. Uh, and I'd also call to your attention that our budget for 2023 was $233,798,782, and thus far to year to date, uh, we have expended $55,263,783. Uh, also, and you'll note that in the consent agenda, there were a number of items, uh, the task orders as well as uh, as presented by Mr. Nicholson, uh, uh, the approved contracting uh, actions. Uh, we acted on those and passed them on, obviously, to the board. And we also deal, dealt with some MOUs and agreements that was presented by Mr. Shockley uh, with regard to the Wilberton Cemetery and a BNSF construction and maintenance agreement. And uh, that agreement with Bur Burlington Northern Santa Fe uh, was a substantial effort on all the staff's part and we should commend them on that effort that we now have a document that uh, I think requires one more number to be plugged in. And other than that, uh, it's, it was a great resolution and, and moving forward with the BNSF uh, group. With that, that's my report. And if there's any questions, I'd stand for them. Any questions of Bernie Dardis? Finalists? Kevin Campbell? Thank you. In regards to the conversation that we just had uh, that Commissioner Pepburn was raising some of the issues on on lands. Do we have a uh, 
In terms of percentage acquired versus not acquired, do we have a way of comparing that with what we had originally put for our total budget for <coughs> land acquisitions? So there's some sort of, is there some sort of comparison that, that, that we can have there? And then Jody, see Jody's getting up there. I have backup if I needed, just so you know, I can call a lifeline. Um, we are working on this currently, and our hope is to bring a refresh budget to you in August. And in doing that, then what has occurred for the acquisition of the property is we had land acquisition directives that were originally approved. Um, I wasn't here when that occurred, so I know kind of from talking with people what the process was. What with the land acquisition directives, there was a budget that was approved associated to that. Last March, a budget refresh happened, and usually the budget increase was attached to that. So last year when the budget was approved, there was an increase to the land budget to accommodate any inflation that has occurred, particularly around lands in this area, which has been significant. At current moment, I'm going painfully through every single land acquisition directive, which means all of the OANs, which means all those parcels, which is about 3,000 of them, and trying to tie those out and making sure then, you know, when we come back to you in August, we'll have a, a better conclusion of kind of where we are, comparatively speaking to when we began the project, when the budget refresh happened last March, and then where we are today. At current moment, I feel comfortable saying that I think we're within our budget. Um, if, if land keeps skyrocketing at 20% growth every year, I might feel a little bit more stressed, but kind of looking at the budget, knowing that we have some contingency built in there, I'm comfortable still with the budget as it is. So. Well, thank you for that. I, I guess uh, speaking from uh, being on the MCC GAPA board too, that that actually does the acquisitions in Minnesota, I think it would be, and we don't often talk about where our land budget was compared to when we're dealing with the day-to-day -day, uh, negotiations that are occurring. And I, I think that's that's something that at some point in time, whether it's the Cass County Joint Water Resource District or, or our board, the MIC board, uh, we should be paying attention to to where where we're at with their overall projected budget for land acquisition. Absolutely, and the Cass County Joint Water Resource District has made a request that we bring that information forward to them in in August, kind of at the same time we would be bringing it to this board as it relates to the lands budget and so certainly we can bring that forward to the moorhead clay county board at the same time perfect thank you mayor Dardis. Yes. Ms. smith when we you talk about the adjustment that we made with the lands budget am i correct and it was a uh, we amended the uh, the budget for 2023 by 15 million is that correct Pulses, no. On our cash budget? No, if if you recall, we did a rebaselining of both the financial plan and then also the uh, program budget in uh, early 2022, March of 2022. That led us through uh, an exercise just to verify the fundability of the program at that point. Um, and with that, we did take a look due to the concerns of the uh, board and of the staff of the existing, the current pricing of the lands, and we had seen the inflation of the land at that point. We did include that in that re refresh. And so at that point, when we established the new financial plan, we wanted to make sure that any inflation that we had seen to date, plus projecting that forward over the next few years as we were um, hitting the, the bulk of the upstream mitigation area, the areas down by Horace, where some of the more expensive lands were anticipated, uh, we wanted to ensure that that was within our financial plan and included in there. So. Getting back to your original question, the $15 million that was added to the, the budget, uh, that's the cash budget that we added it to. And that was to ensure that we had uh, the cash available uh, underneath the financial plan and underneath the program budget. Very good, thank you. 
I think the only other thing that I would add, so maybe Paul shouldn't sit down too fast, but um, we do have a risk register that we go through uh, twice a year, and we just went through the lands this past week, and that then we always account for any risk, including inflation to the lands budget, eminent domain costs, uh, and other things. And within that, then there's a value placed on that risk, and so that ensures that we have enough contingency set forth in the budget for that. So, thank you. Any other business, Mr. Strand? Th thank you, Mayor. I'm just curious. Uh, my question will divulge my my lacking, not having done what I was supposed to do. Apparently, I don't recall seeing an evaluation request for our executive director. How many did you end up getting, John? Uh, I think we got eight. We got eight. It was sent out as a form, John. I can resend it because you can be part of that total because we wouldn't mind it, like to have it in there. When was that? At least a month ago, two months ago. Two months ago. Probably two months ago. Two months ago. Right. Yeah. That's I can re-get it to you. We did not get every board member. So, Any other discussions or questions? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 The next meeting, July 27th. Aye. Have a good fourth. Is there anything else? No. Mary, you're okay? Very good. We're adjourned. I was just chiming in with an eye. Okay, thank you. <laughs>